Hey Tube, AB Fix here. Welcome to episode 9 of Mail Mania. We've got an Amazon package to start it off. As usual, we usually have at least one Amazon package in these unboxings, so let's waste no time and get into it. This contains two figures. Um, one of them is not for me though, it's for a friend. Uh, if you watched one of my previous episodes of Mail Mania, I don't remember what one it was specifically, but it had the Elite Series 47. Cesaro and Elite Series 48 Dean Ambrose in it. That was also to my friend. This is going to the same friend. Um, doing combined orders saves us money. So, yeah, it's very useful. Um, I'll just get this out of the way. First of all, I'll show you the figure that my friend is getting. It is the Basic Series 73 Cesaro. Man, it's a very cool Cesaro figure. I'm very impressed. Probably my favourite Cesaro attire that's been made on a figure at this stage. It's a shame the Elite Cesaro didn't have this attire because it looks sick. I love it. I love the attire. And if I ever get the chance to find this in the store, I may even pick it up because it's just such a cool attire. Here's the back of the box. Unfortunately, there is a bit of a bend here. It's very unfortunate. Um, but they'll probably open it anyway. Um, cool figures in the set though, the, the AJ Styles is a cool basic figure, and the Seth Rollins isn't bad either. Uh, there isn't really a bad figure in the set to be honest. Um, now let's move on to what I'm having. Oh yes, it is the basic series 72 Nia Jax, and it has the Slammy with it. Um, the Slammy is an uncertainty, I didn't, you can't, oh actually you can't specifically order them with the Slammies. It's just a chance thing, I guess. Uh, you have a chance of getting a Slammy. Uh, as you saw, the Cesaro didn't have a Slammy, but this one did. It's an awesome surprise. Um, yeah, I wasn't expecting to get a Slammy with this at all. So, yeah, I'm very stoked. Here's the back of the, this box. Another great set of figures. I do want to pick up that Zack Ryder sometime down the line as well. The Seamus figure actually looks decent as well. I wouldn't mind picking that up, but money is always a little bit of an issue. If I had all the money in the world, I'd pick up Zack Ryder, Seamus, Shinsuke Nakamura, maybe even Dolph Ziggler as well. So very cool. I'm stoked with these. Um, the condition of the box isn't great again, but I suppose um, I could flatten it out by sticking the carding underneath a book or something. So this is our package. I'll, sh I'll give you a closer look at both figures. We'll start off with Cesaro. Looking at the face, I think it's really accurate. It looks a lot like Cesaro. The only problem I can see with it is how big the head is. Um, yeah, compared to the body, it's quite a big head, but it's a common occurrence these days for Mattel. I've noticed they've made quite a few new heads that are oversized. So it's not too big of a deal. It's hard to notice. It's only when you look up close that you really notice it, so it's not too bad. And oh, he also has some wrist tape on his right wrist, and he has some white trunks with the gold and black designs, and at the top they have the black and gold stripes. Very cool, I really like those trunk designs. And he has the white knee pads with the black in the center, very cool design. And to top it all off, he has his black boots, uh, signature Cesaro boots, and it even says Cesaro on the side. Turning our attention to Nia Jax, we'll look at the face first. Very accurate face in my opinion. They painted it very well. I notice, more often than not, the paint on the heads let down the likeness, but this one has been painted perfectly, so it's a perfect likeness for Nia Jax. She has some frizzy brown hair as well. Uh, we might as well look at the Slammy as well. Uh, it's just the regular Slammy you get in any other figure. This is my first Slammy, so it's pretty cool for me. The jumpsuit here, that's probably the coolest part of the figure. Uh, a lot of extra molded detail. Very awesome. It's black and red with some silver studs around the place. There's some shoulder pads there, molded on, they look great. 
this whole figure almost is a new mold. I'd say everything apart from the hands is a new mold. It just looks amazing. I'm so impressed. Are those boots a new mold? They could be. Uh, they look like just the regular male superstar boots, but they could be new mold to fit Night Jacks. You never know. Very special figure, and I seriously think it's a contender for the figure of the year. This will probably be on my list if I end up doing a top 5 or top 10 figures of the year video. So very impressive, and I definitely recommend that you pick this one up if you can find it. Surprise, surprise, our next package is also from Amazon. So I'll just quickly cut into this one. This one, probably right behind the AJ Styles as the hardest figure for me to get on Amazon. Because this one just sold out very quickly each time I tried to get it. Just like the AJ Styles, it would pop up back in stock, I'd put it in the cart, and right before I go to the checkout, it says, sorry, item is no longer in stock. I was lucky enough to catch it right before it sold out again. Sorry, I'm having a little bit of difficulty cutting into it. But yeah, I'm very excited to get this one open. Here we go, I'll just move it out of the way. So inside we have the new SummerSlam Elite Series Finn Balor. Based off of obviously when he won the Universal Championship against Seth Rollins in the first ever Universal Championship match. Now this is a very important figure because it's a very significant date and probably one of Finn Balor's defining moments. Uh, is it the defining moment? I'm not sure because he was already really popular before he came to the main roster, but here's the back of the box. This is definitely a great moment in Finn Balor's career, if not the greatest moment. Who knows, either this or possibly the Beast in the East 2015 when he won the NXT title, because that really made him a significant NXT talent, which got him very popular. So I'll give you a closer look at this, and this actually completes my Elite Demon King Finn Balor collection, so I might as well show you the collection after this too. First looking at the only accessory this figure comes with, the Universal Championship. This is my first Universal Championship in figure form that I've had. I didn't get the Kevin Owens figure because I didn't need it, but yeah, enough about that. Now to the figure. This isn't 100% accurate, the figure, based on photos that I've looked at, but I needed it for my Finn Balor collection, so it didn't really matter to me. It looks close enough to it. If you don't look at photos, it's kind of hard to tell that there are any differences. But looking at the face, I'm trying to get to focus, there we go. It's a little bit different to his regular demon paint. There's the teeth and everything, but he also has this white design around his right eye. So it's very interesting, and it's still a cool thing to have in your collection, because it's something different. And looking at the torso, there's all kinds of details on this. You've got the standard teeth on his all of his demon attires, but he also has the green tongue, which is something completely different. He's never had green on any of his Finn Bella demon attires before this, so it's very cool, very interesting. He also has a bunch of writing all over the place. This is probably the most obvious inaccuracy based on photos. The writing just doesn't match up completely. There's a little bit of extra writing like down here. He didn't have any writing down here in real life on the paint. And if you read it closely, it says, if I can focus in, I'm not sure if I can. Emo AJ. <laughs> I'm not sure if that Metalla sneakily putting that in there or not, but yeah, it's something I thought I'd point out that's not on Finn Balor's actual attire. And he's also got two armbands, only one of them has the designs, which is accurate to the event. It looks like that it could be sharp teeth, or maybe just, I don't know, I don't know what else it could be. It looks like it could be sharp teeth, maybe just stripes. He has the trunks with the red flame designs by the looks of it, it looks like it could be flames. It's a little bit more simple to what we've had in the past on the Demon King Finn Balor figures. But it's accurate, I'm not sure why he's going for a more simple look here, but yeah. He's also got more of the writing here, 
Um, again, not 100% accurate, but Mattel looks like they gave it their best shot. You can see a few of the little things that are written in there, like Demon, King, Finn, Bella, and stuff like that. It's all scribbles and stuff, but it does look pretty cool. It kind of resembles the real life attire. On his knee pads, his left one has the teeth designs, and the right one has nothing, which is accurate. And the boots are plain. So very quickly, I'll show you my Finn Balor Elite Demon Collection. We've got the Elite Series 41 from the NXT TakeOver Rival 2015. This is probably the most iconic Finn Balor Demon attire. And some people still say that this is the best Finn Balor figure out there. I have to disagree, but it's definitely up there. This is Elite Series 46 based on Beast in the East 2015 when he won the NXT title. Another very significant attire in Finn Balor's career. Some people still say that this is the best because there's a lot of detail. There's the WWE Network Spotlight Toys R Us exclusive series based on NXT TakeOver Dallas 2016. This is my personal favorite Finn Balor figure because it has the most accessories and in my opinion the most detail and the most accuracy. And of course we've got the SummerSlam 2016 Finn Balor figure which has to be my least favorite because it lacks accessories and it's the least accurate in my opinion. But it's not a bad figure. None of these are bad figures. They are all good figures to have and it's pretty cool. I probably won't be picking up the basic Finn Balor figure from the NXT TakeOver The End which comes with the NXT ring because it'll just cost too much money for me and it's a basic figure so it's not as important as an Elite. And it's not a very detailed attire and also I don't think he won the match that he wore that attire in so it's not very important for me to get it but still very cool. But yeah I thought I'd just quickly show you my Finn Balor collection. Now let's get on to the next package. These next two figures didn't come in the mail, but they did come from my Nana who just returned from a trip in America and Canada. And she brought back these two figures, which was a complete surprise to me. She always likes to bring stuff back if she's ever on a trip um, for my brother and I. Um, I was not expecting her to find anything. She knew that I liked the WWE action figures, and she knows I like to keep them in the package. So on her first stop in the trip, she picked these two figures up and kept them in the best condition possible, which is just awesome. So the first one is the Hall of Fame Series 4 Booker T. Uh, this is Target exclusive. Man, I'm so blown away that she was able to bring these two back. And according to her, these two figures were the only two ones there. So it's incredible. Here's the back of the box the others in the set down there and for the next figure it is in series 4 it is Edge I was gonna buy this one myself as well it's I'm man it's such a cool figure in person and I think it's just so cool that she was able to bring these ones back and it's ironic that these are the two that she found in the shop the only two that were actually there in Target and here's the back of this box. This one has quite a lot of writing on it. And of course the other three in the set. There's Booker over there. So I'll give you a closer look at both of these. But I'll also give you a comparison with two other figures I have. Uh, the, I'll compare the Booker T with this one. The original Elite Series 14 Booker T figure that was released back in 2012. And I'll compare this edge with the Elite Series 8 Edge, which I actually bought because I never thought I'd get my hands on that. So let's take a look at the Booker T first. So in terms of the crown, they are both the same mould with similar paints on them, but this one has a little bit more detail. They left a bit of detail on this, just a few little red dots. I'm not even sure if they're picking up on camera, but it's hard to notice all the missing details. It's probably not a big deal. But yeah, I thought I'd just point that out. The head sculpts are exactly the same. Can't see any differences with them. Um, actually, I do see a difference. This one has eyebrows a little bit lower than these. These eyebrows are a bit higher. Um, the coats. Um, this one has no gold trim around the inside of 
the white fur whereas this one does uh, if you can see that right there all the gold detail there it's lacking on this one um, this one has the gold buttons that button up the coat and this one just has the white buttons um, it's obvious that this one has less detail but it's only really small it's hard to notice that it's missing any detail at all I didn't realize it until I compared it with this one that it was missing a little bit of detail and obviously they've done that for cost reasons the scepters they look exactly the same in terms of sculpt and the red on them looks the same this one has a little bit more of a dull gold than this one this gold is a bit more dark and a bit more shiny the wrist tape on this one is black and it has the gold and red designs and this one is just white and no designs on them the trunks on each include the same exact design but these have gold trunks and these are white the knee pads are the same um, nothing really to say about those the boots they are the same design but again this one uh, has gold boots and this one has white boots so I'd say this represents just a normal Booker T more if you remove all the accessories whereas this better represents King Booker all round so depends on what you prefer I can't come up with which figure is better this one obviously is missing a little bit of detail but it's very hard to notice so it's hard to come to a conclusion which one's better it's up to you to decide now we'll look at edge so first I'd like to point out that this one includes sunglasses and this one doesn't so I'll take these sunglasses off so we can compare the head sculpts this one is based on WrestleMania 24 when he fought the Undertaker for the World Heavyweight Championship so this one didn't need glasses because he didn't wear glasses to the ring for that match so this is more time accurate they both have the same coats while well, similar same mold but this one is black and this one is grey which is actually accurate because Edge's coat for WrestleMania 24 that he wore to the ring was more of a grey but this is more iconic Edge though so I'd say this is the better coat but there's still nothing wrong with this because it's, it's time accurate the head sculpts it's obvious that this one is better it looks more like Edge this one doesn't really look like Edge at all so that's all I have to say about that there's no point me taking off the jacket to show you the tattoos on this one because it's pretty much the same on this and you can't even see many of the tattoos in the packaging anyway. You can see the cross but that's not really relevant for this comparison. So let's turn our attention to the tights. This one has red tights and if I open up the jacket there you can see it has a white, black and grey stripe with the star with R inside and this one has the very detailed camo designs so I just have to say this is a more iconic look for Edge with these tights and these are obviously more detailed so these definitely have the better tights the boots again these are iconic Edge boots with the iconic Edge rated R superstar logo in the middle of each and this one has a different design on each boot this one has the skull design and on the other one it has the stripe designs just like the tights do although both figures look cool I have to give the edge no pun intended to this one and this one is obviously easier to get your hands on at the moment so I recommend getting this one if you need an elite edge figure but this one is also cool and if you have the chance to pick this up go ahead the final package of this video is coming from Amazon it's a figure that's really been five years in the making uh, you'll see what I mean in a minute I'll just open this up I'm very excited for this figure inside I'm a huge fan of this WWE Superstar slash Hall of Famer very excited to get this open here we go just get the box out of the way it is the Elite Series 51 Scott Hall man I was really excited for this uh, where's his spray can it's at the bottom of the box 
Oh. That's odd. So we'll have a look at the back of the box. Not sure I'm going to do about that because I'm a mint on card collector and I'm pretty picky. Um, yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do about that. I'm not completely happy with that. Um, the tape's peeling off there. Um, I don't know, the box seems to be in pretty... Right. Oh, actually, no, there's a bit of a dent there. It's been pushed out. Uh, I don't really know about this then. Oh, and there's... Oh, okay, I, I see some issues with it. I'll go into it in a minute, but the reason I was so excited for this is because it finally can go with this Elite Series 16 Kevin Nash figure. This figure looks pretty plain by itself, and now it has the Scott Hall to match from the Bash and the Beach 1996. So I'm very excited to complete that at least. But let's take a closer look at the figure. So just a quick little update. I did fix the packaging how the spray can was loose in it um, so the tape on this side was barely hanging on um, so I I really didn't like doing it but I peeled it off and carefully opened the packaging and just shook the spray can back into place um, so it's good as new I if this was the first one I got from Amazon then I would have sent it back but honestly I had to get the replacement this is the replacement one I tried doing this video earlier with the first Scott Hall figure and yeah the packaging was very damaged so I sold it off to someone who only wanted the figure so that's all good so now we'll get into the review looking at the face man this is definitely uh, the best Scott Hall head sculpt Mattel has done yet I think it's perfect. Perfectly captures Scott Hall, in my opinion. We've got his sunglasses there, we've got his NWO top, and of course the spray can. We've got his signature black vest with the red drips going down there. He has a signature chest here, but Mattel have improved it on this one. Um, in past Razor Ramona Scott Hall figures, the chest here was really thick and didn't look realistic, but this one it's a lot thinner and they've definitely improved it so that's really good um, this is a plain black elbow pad and on this one you can't see it but um oh yeah you can kinda see it um, the red drips on the back of that one which is accurate because only his left one had the design on it so yeah you, you can't see much of it but yeah there's definitely some red drips on that going down to his trunks his signature Outsider trunks that he wore during Bash at the Beach 1996. Um, very unique trunks. I don't remember him wearing these very often. So it's cool that they've captured it in figure form. Um, yeah, you can't really see the whole thing, but um, that's the start of it. Um, the O and the U, the Outsiders, that's all you can see. But a very great design, and Mattel nailed it in my opinion. Uh, we've got his two black knee pads um, with the same red drip designs going down. And to top it all off, he has his red boots with the black lace, the white trim at the bottom, and also the silver studs for the laces, the silver loops. That's amazing how they added that detail. They didn't have to do that at all. Even if they didn't do this, it would have still been a phenomenal figure. But this tops it off and probably one of Mattel's best figures of 2017. I wouldn't say the best, uh, but man, there's no complaints at all for this figure. I love it, and great to finish off this video. Um, I'm a big Scott Hall fan, and this is the figure I've always wanted. So that'll do it for this huge episode of Mail Mania. Thank you so much for watching. Now, I have a little question for you guys. Would you like me to do the next episode of Mail Mania, episode 10, in front of the camera? So you, you can see my face as I unbox these so I can get my natural reactions on camera. So is that something you guys want to see? Let me know. Um, so these videos, they get probably about 5 to 8, maybe 9 likes each video. Um, judging by the views that the, these videos get, 
at least, or at the very least, in about a week, these would have about 50 views. So I'm not asking for 50 likes, but just to let me know that you guys want to see uh, my face in front of the camera for the next episode of Mail Mania. 10 likes, how about that? So, even if there's just 50 of you guys, if 10 of you could like this video, then I'll definitely do that, because I know a lot of people would like to see that. Um, so yeah, thank you for watching, and subscribe. Thank <laughs> you.